is the plastic surgeon to the stars. Now, he can't say whose faces he's lifted, of course, but believe me, Hollywood would not look the same without him. Please welcome Dr. Stephen Hoffman. Thank you. Thank you. Steve, so good to see you. Now, we, nice we've been you. friends a long time, yes, and you were very kind to help me. When I was doing Doc Hollywood, you let me come in, and mm -hmm. I spent some time in your office and got a feel for how, it, how surgery was done. He watched uh, you actually do a facelift, right? Absolutely. George was a great student. I mean, he learned too well. Uh, Can I ask you a question, though? How, if I, I'm a woman and I'm going to mm -hmm. have a facelift, you come to me and say, I've got George mm -hmm. Hamilton, he wants to come in and watch the surgery? This was Isn't a friend weird? of mine who had the surgery done. Oh, and, I see. Yes, and I, and I would have to have permission. Oh, of course. Mm -hmm. So I went into it. It was fascinating to see the way you work. You're an artist. You invent the tools, even. That's what's amazing to me. Now, can you explain something? We've got this uh, bizarre little head here. But, Mr. Skull. But can you explain to people why or why not to have a, a, a facelift? Well, George, the face ages in different segments. Forehead ages by muscle dropping on the outside by an increase in muscle activity on the inside, called scrow lines. The mid face ages because fat drops. Okay, we used to think that muscle or the muscle became loose. In the breast and the buttock area, fat tends to drop down. So instead of tightening the muscle, we elevate the fat. The neck, of course, the muscle becomes loose. These are the muscle bands here. So we're changing the techniques. It gives really wonderful results. We're, we're very pleased with some of the technical abilities that we have today. So you're making, lifting the fat? Absolutely. We, what we do in the, in the uh, forehead area is we're actually lifting muscle and smoothing the corrugator muscle down. Right. But in the mid face, instead of lifting the muscle areas, now a newer technique is elevating and fixating the fat. It gives a much more youthful, much more natural appearance than the previous technique. What kind of time is involved now in a face lift? If someone wanted to come in, how long are they out of work before they're back looking better than they the Average did? of 10 days. It may Ten be a week, weeks. it may be two weeks. By the time somebody can get back socializing, going out to dinner, back to work, and not have somebody know that you know, things were done. But doesn't that vary on weeks. their own uh, personal uh, healing and clotting and Corporate bruising? We, we give a, a very detailed set of instructions to patients before surgery. Uh, I truly believe in a, in a herbal program that really decreases swelling, decreases Arnica. bruising. Arnica. Arnica is one of the factors, of course, as you know. And there's, there's many, many things that I think are new that are, are really beneficial to help patients heal and to decrease the recovery time. Do people yeah. expect too much? I'm sorry, because I, I just, I don't mean to interrupt, but uh, I'm fascinated by surgery. Mm -hmm. and do, do people, ex uh, do they expect too much when they go to have surgery sometimes? Well, certainly some do. I think part of a good surgeon's role is really to instruct patients in what is realistic and what is not. You know, this is serious business. I think people have to know what is possible and what isn't and be properly prepared. It's, it's very important. It really is. What about being affordable for, mm -hmm. for, for people who don't have thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of dollars to spend? Well, I think, Alani, it, it is more affordable than it used to be, certainly, in many aspects. We do surgery now in an office setting and facilities that are really, you know, very, very technical and, and certified. Uh, the expense is much less than a hospital, of course. You know, it, it is expensive surgery. It could be an in the office. Average, yes. What would the, what's the average cost of a facelift? I think, depending on what's done in addition, whether one has the forehead or eyelids done, between ten to twenty thousand dollars, I would say. Really, mm -hmm. that much? No. It can wow. be less in certain circumstances. Can I get a discount more. since I know you? Well, of course. No, no, no. That's, no, 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 Alana, that's discount or viscount, Lenny, not discount. Now, right. now uh -huh. when, 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 I know that you do a lot of charity work, mm -hmm. and you've taken some cases that are amazing mm -hmm. for free. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of the cases that you've done. Well, I, I was a very busy burn surgeon for a decade back in the 70s and early 80s, as you know, George, and I still take care of a lot of those patients. Many of them don't have the means, and, and we as physicians, we do provide charity work. We don't advertise it or discuss it very much, but it's sure. there. It's part of our role as doctors to do that. What about, uh, what about knowing whether you're getting a great doctor? It's hard to get you because you're booked up for years, but what about uh, if somebody out in middle America doesn't know who to go to? How do they find the right guy? I think there are four factors that are important. You want one that is well trained in the procedure and is doing the procedure on a regular basis. You want to ensure that the basic training has been accomplished, board eligibility or board certification in the specialty that you're seeking. You know, one that has a facility that's recognized and certified. This is extremely important. And the other factor, too, is the support personnel that a doctor has. It's not only the physician himself. It's really the peripheral factors around him. And it's surprising how people would check out a, a plastic surgeon really less than they would in, in terms of purchasing a new car or a piece of furniture. 
It's extremely important to spend as much time in doing a diligent checkout of the doctor, the facility, and the support staff as one would any factor in their life. So really I had important. a question before, and I didn't mm -hmm. know much about it. Sure. Ask him the question you wanted to know so much about mm -hmm. the, the, the thing that happened and him saving the... Yeah, I know what I wanted to ask you. Recently, you made local headlines mm -hmm. when you saved someone's life at the Santa Monica Pier. Well, and I'm, tell us about that I'm real quick. I'm surprised that got coverage, but uh, part of the day's work. I, uh, I was on the end of a pier with some, some people that we had had a dinner party with, and this... You know, man was really despondent. He was out of work. He had, he had lost his uh, unemployment uh, compensation and decided to commit suicide. It was really his third attempt, unfortunately, and he jumped right in the water. So I, I scuba dive. I feel very comfortable in the water and went in after him. I didn't realize, you know, quite the, the degree of, uh, of roughness of the water and how cold it was at the time. Uh, I was in for a long period of time, and uh, you know, I'm happy we saved him. And um, he's now he's working. For, a, working for he's now working. This is well, a wonderful I, part. I, I didn't want him to do it again, so there was really no choice. Uh, he's a very nice individual. He's a, he's actually a computer specialist. He's helping me write a book uh, that I'm completing. So and he's doing great now, isn't he? He's doing wonderful. That's wonderful. Thank, Thank you so much. much. You're welcome. Thank you. Come and see us again anytime. The rest of it. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Hoffman. We'll be back.